It's not going to really little. I wrote this one to liquor. Nothing for my friends. It's not my papers. My parents always told me, tengo orgullo de tu mente. I'm taking the opportunities to pass you for the front. I'm black and mente. I'm black and mente. I'm black and mente. March 10th is sharing our stories at, and publicly coming out as undocumented to so kind of st step away from that fear that for, for most of us that, as children we were kind of instilled, you know, to never share your status, you might be taken away. Back then I didn't know what deportation or being undocumented meant. I later found out that deportation not only meant going back to a country that I no longer knew, but also being separated from my family. I am no longer afraid of people finding out my status. I am not sorry that I was brought to this country for a better life. I came to this country with my mother and sister, following my father, who like many others has been working in this country for many years. I want to keep on developing myself in order to do better things and do bigger things, but I am not allowed because like many others, I wasn't born in this country. I am sick of being treated like I'm less of a human. To all the dreamers out there in my community, to all the young people hiding out in your bedrooms, Wishing with all your heart that something would change, that this country would finally recognize you as an American. You can't wish for change, nor can you go at it alone. In the Asian American community, we don't talk openly about being undocumented in fear of bringing shame to our families and ourselves. But refusing to address a problem that plagues us too doesn't make it go away. I spent years in denial, keeping my head down whenever I was told I don't belong here that my parents are criminals, lawbreakers, take advantage of the system. I was ashamed. I, with my head raised high, can finally look at my parents in the eyes and tell them, I don't blame you. I no longer have to hide. I am not ashamed. I know I have a voice. I Seeing know all of we these people say, have a voice. You know, I'm undocumented, but I'm not afraid anymore you know, changed everything for me because for the longest time I've been ashamed of being undocumented. I've, you know, I've been afraid of even saying the word undocumented. I, I never really wrote it down because I never wanted to admit it to myself and I always felt that it was my fault and that I should never talk about it. Good afternoon, how are you guys all doing? I'm pleased to join with you today as we stand together, fighting in one of the most important battles of our lifetime. We now have SB 1070 brewing in Arizona, a state that's sweltering with the heat of oppression. And we now live in a society that restricts young children and students from attaining higher education based solely on their status. 2010 is the year that we must put an end to the injustice of our broken immigration system. My name is David Cho, and I'm a fourth year studying international economics and Korean at UCLA. 
It took me a very long time to say this, but I'm undocumented. While most of my friends will enter the workplace after graduation, I will not be able to even put my name down on a job application because of my status. I'm a hardworking student with a 3.6 GPA, and I'm the first Korean, and actually the first undocumented student, to ever become the conductor, the drum major of the UCLA marching band in UCLA history. My family and I, my family and I emigrated from South Korea to California when I was nine because my dad believed that my two younger sisters and I could fulfill the American dream. Back in Korea, my dad was a huge hotel manager and my mom was a piano instructor who taught over 30 students. But due to our status now, my dad currently works at a gas station in Los Angeles, plus graveyard shifts, barely sleeping four to five hours a day, and my mom babysits at home making less than minimum wage. I work 20 hours a week tutoring high school students, and my sister works as well. My family and I are just trying to do everything we can to pay for our apartment rent, utility bills, and not only my college tuition at UCLA, but also my sister's at Cal Poly Pomona. I feel like I'm living inside an invisible prison cell because there are these invisible bars in front of me that limit me from doing the things that I want to do, that my U.S. citizen friends can do. I actually want to serve in the U.S. Air Force after graduation. I want to attend Harvard Kennedy School of Government. And I ultimately, I ultimately want to become a U.S. Senator because I want to make changes in this country. May 2001 was the first time that I saw her. I saw her at my graduation, and immediately upon seeing her, I knew that she was going to be the one to change everything. I knew that she was going to teach me what hope was all about. I spotted her when I was on stage, diploma in my hand. I saw her stand up and head for the exit. And amid that crowded auditorium, I saw my parents waving at me. I saw my friends throwing me the thumbs up. All that I could focus on was her leaving she never turned around. I was 17 going on 18 and in my young naive mind I thought I had it all figured out. I was graduating from high school, a couple of college situations in which I was on the fence about. It was an exciting time but then I got the bad news. All this work and blood and sweat and tears, all that high school awkwardness, all those extracurricular activities, all of that went to hell when I got that letter in the mail asking me for proper documentation. I didn't know what to show him. I didn't have anything to show him. I knew I wasn't born in the United States, but I thought my paperwork was straight. I was graduating from high school with my whole life ahead of me. But this transition into college life got put on hold. Life went on. I watched all of my friends move on. I stayed behind. I got a job, started bussing tables, and I saved up some money. AB 540 had just passed in California. So by the time fall semester started that year, I was able to afford being a full-time student. I led a triple life. During the day, I was a student, an undocumented student at that. And at night, I was a service sector slave. And in between my classes and my night shifts, and after my night shifts, that's when my work got completed. I never forgot her. 